It's the final chapter of our Blackburn Rovers story, and with £60 million to spend, but a large squad, it's time to sell as well as use instalments in a bid to win it all in the final season. I bought in Hugo Ibarra for £15 million as a right-back squad option, as Revelier was unhappy, and, and we offered him for about £25 million, as well as Mark Van Bommel for another £25 million, Chris Sutton, Richard Wright, David Unsworth, and a few others left, which netted us over a hundred million pounds. So we went after Joe Cole again as his release clause was 55 million. This time we were a more attractive prospect than West Ham, Premier League winners and current European champions. Joe Cole finally signed. Then a marquee signing was needed, spending a hundred million pounds up front plus some instalments. We broke the bank for Fabio Cannavaro. 143 million pounds spent on a world-class centre-back. Our final signing was a freebie as we snaffled Diego Simeone from long-time rivals into Milan. These signings made a statement and was the step we needed to go and win it all. In other transfer news, Darren Huckabee went to Real Madrid. And the season began with the European Super Cup against Fiorentina. In a dull affair, we lost 1-0 to a Gabriel Batistuta goal. And it didn't get any easier starting off the season against United. Saviola put us 1-0 ahead late on, but with literally the last kick of the game, Dwight York equalised. A draw at Old Trafford? We'll take that. Saviola continued his scoring start, bagging a hat-trick in a 6-0 win against Norwich. A £143 million man, Fabio Cannavaro, also got his first goal for the club. A draw away at Old Trafford was a decent result, then dismantling Norwich like this. We're here to take our title back. We followed this win up with another 6-0, this time against Derby. Saviola scoring another two goals, but not to be continuously outdone, John Carew, Carew, he actually bagged a hat-trick. A phenomenal start, and up next a trip to Anfield. But as it stands, we're second on goal difference. Only Aston Villa lead the way with the perfect record so far. Saviola is top of the scorer's charts. Can he stay there? At Anfield, our other new boy got his first goal for us. Joe Cole rescued a point against Liverpool. A strong start, despite drawing twice in four games. The Champions League got underway and Javier Saviola decided he was making a real play for the Golden Boot this season as he scored another hat-trick in a 3-1 win. We succumbed to our first league defeat against Chelsea in an eight-goal thriller losing 5-3. We then snuck past Fulham in the Coca-Cola Cup on penalties before dropping points against Sheffield Wednesday in a 1-1 draw. And with us winless in three games in the league, we've actually slipped to mid-table, 11th. This is disappointing and gives us a mountain to climb in order to reclaim our title. It was back to the Champions League, which was a welcome distraction. In a repeat of last year's Champions League final, we travelled to Turin to face Juventus, starting strongly with an early goal from Saviola, and Shevchenko made it two before the half-hour mark. Cannavaro bagged his first own goal of the season before Raquel May secured the win from the spot. Mark Bosnich was in no man's land as Zambrotta made injury time a little nervy, but we won 3-2. The Champions League retention has started well. But what hasn't started well is reclaiming our Premier League trophy. We went behind against Villa with Mark Bosnich again all over the place. We fought back and Saviola rescued us again as we won 3-2, bagging a brace. It was a tight 1-0 win against Middlesbrough as we started to recover in the league. That recovery has us in sixth, United and Arsenal setting the pace, unbeaten and seven points clear of us. We then dismantled Valencia 5-0 in the Champions League. Joe Cole is really finding his feet, both feet in fact, as he popped up with two excellently taken finishes. The first was a fortuitous bobble that he lashed home. The second was a well-controlled left-footed volley into the bottom corner. Back in the league and it was West Ham and we were limping towards a 1-0 win thanks to a Saviola goal. But West Ham scored an equaliser in the 92nd minute. And just look at it. I don't even know who to blame. The defence, the keeper, the gods, either way it causes us to falter once more. We beat Coventry in the Coca-Cola Cup before getting back on track once again in the league with a scintillating display against Fulham as we ran out 5-0 winners. We left it late to open the floodgates but with five different scorers, I'm hoping we can start to accumulate points and climb up the table. It was back-to-back 5-0 wins as well, as we beat Admirate Wacker Modelling, the highlight being Javier Saviola's third hat-trick already this season. And we continued our pattern of absolutely hammering teams, or squeezing past them unconvincingly, as we beat Sunderland 1-0, then Charlton 2-0. As we beat Charlton, the league pace-setters United and Arsenal faced off, and it was United who won 
or nil. We find ourselves in fifth, so we're slowly but surely climbing the table, but we're actually slipping further away from United as we're nine points off the pace. Javier Saviour Riola, God, that was tenuous. Javier Saviola was our saviour once again as we beat PSV 1 0. And it was Mark Bosnich who was also the saviour, saving a penalty. If you can believe that. After five games, it was five wins, and we were making a real statement in our pursuit of retaining our Champions League trophy. Back to the league, and we found our shooting boots once more. A 5 0 winning at Southampton, all the goals in the first half. Javier Saviour Riola back once again with a 1-0 win against Everton then a brilliant 4-1 win against Spurs the result never really in doubt and it was a classic against Bayern Munich in the Champions League going ahead from an Andrei Shevchenko penalty the lead however did not last long as Oliver Bierhoff equalised but then it was Shevchenko again before half time restoring our lead with a lovely touch and finish however the second half began and it was Oliver Bierhoff once more this time with a bullet header making it 2-2 we then went ahead for the third time in the game as Saviola volleyed home a Barra's cross. Then two goals in two minutes from Bayern had them go into the lead for the first time in the match and it was our turn to try and respond. And respond we did as Shevchenko completed his hat-trick and rounded off a magnificent 4 all draw. Back to the Premier League and it was a much calmer affair as we scored two goals in two minutes and we beat Wimbledon 2-0. And with that win against Wimbledon, it was seven wins in a row, and in the league, we've climbed to third. United and Arsenal were both held to draws, which helped us close the gap as well. It's still a seven-point lead for United, but surely they'll have a dip in form at some point. It's up to us to stay consistent, stay winning, and capitalise when that happens. Coca-Cola Cup quarter-final time, it was our good friends and league leaders, Manchester United. It took till the 71st minute for the deadlock to be broken as Javier Saviola dispatched Harry Kuehl's cross. The lead lasted four minutes as Paul Scholes equalised and we understood why United were unbeaten and runaway leaders in the league. As they just seemed to find a way, Ryan Giggs putting them ahead in the 88th minute and it looked all but over. However, Emery scored a magnificent free kick with the last kick of the game and penalties awaited. Mark Bosnich became the hero as he saved from Dwight York, then Paul Scholes hit the post and we secured passage through to the semi-finals. Then things started shambolically against Newcastle as they found themselves with a two-goal lead after 27 minutes. Enter the club legends, Andrei Shevchenko pulling one back before half-time, then John Carew Carew with a brace in the second half. He did score one or two, and he is bigger than me and you. He's John Carew Carew. We followed that up with a 2-0 win against Leeds, and then it was a huge game against Arsenal. And it was important to start strong, and that's exactly what we did. John Carew scoring after just 34 seconds. Arsenal were rocked, and we capitalised as Shevchenko doubled our lead inside three minutes. Ewood Park was rocking, and Arsenal fell apart, conceding a third after just eight minutes. Anelka broke through and rounded Mark Bosnich to pull one back, but John Carew restored the three-goal lead and completed his hat-trick before the half-hour mark. Anelka pulled another back for Arsenal in the second half with a well-taken finish, but it mattered for nothing as the final score was 4-2. We then came from behind and won 3-1 against West Ham to close out the year. Our form has been fantastic and we've moved into second. United, though, are still running away with it, but it's Arsenal who've had their blip and we find ourselves six points clear of them at this point. United are still unbeaten, but we've thrown away bigger leads ourselves, so we've got to believe. And we started the new year terribly with a 2-1 defeat to Middlesbrough. We then beat Villa in the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg 2-1. However, we did miss a penalty. Let us hope we don't look back on that as a turning point in the tie. We eased past Stockport in the FA Cup third round before we were made to root our missed penalties once more. This time it was Michael Balak and Christian Kivu in the shootout against Villa, falling short of the final in the Coca-Cola Cup. John Carew then left it late to grab a brace to secure a victory against Kaiserslautern before we got our revenge in Aston Villa, beating them 4-1 in the league. A couple of late goals sealed it after, once again, we came from behind. A pretty miserable January looked as if it was going from bad to worse as Fulham raced into a 2-0 lead in the first half. John Carew managed to prod home from a rebound to half the deficit, however, Fulham restored their two-goal lead within five minutes. John Carew then lashed one home into the top corner from outside the box and he deserved to go and celebrate that, but instead he went to retrieve the ball and get the game back underway. But it was a wise decision as John Carew managed to pop up and score his hat-trick, equalising, setting up the usual last-minute drama. And as ever, we did not disappoint. There was a goal in the 90th minute, but for who, Chris Kamara? It was Fulham. Fulham 1-4-3. 
And with that defeat, we sit in second still. Eight points behind United and one clear of Chelsea in third. Where have Chelsea come from? We keep failing to capitalise on the rare occasions United do slip up. We served up a feast against Servette as we won 8-1, a hat-trick for Carew, a brace for Shevchenko and we rounded off the Champions League phase, finishing second. Behind Lazio had a perfect record. Maybe we'll see you in the final. We continued to perform against Arsenal, once again starting quickly as Saviola gave us the lead inside two minutes. Arsenal held firm, or at least firmer than the last game, as it took until 26 minutes to make it 2-0, as Joe Cole made a late run to score a header. It was then a wonderful passing move as Saviola made it 3 and the game was dead and buried. We weren't one better than the 4-2 win earlier in the season, as we won 5-2. We then scored 5 again, this time against Cambridge, as we progressed in the FA Cup. But then we dropped points against Norwich, drawing one all. The gap to United remains at 8 points, with 13 games left. We desperately needed to gain ground, and fast, and we were presented with the perfect opportunity as United came to Ewood Park. And it was a cagey affair, but Shevchenko managed to pop up with not one, but two in the second half. It was a nervy end to the game as Cannavaro deflected a cross and it looped up over Bosnich, but we held on for the win. And it was hat-trick number four for Saviola as we brushed aside Leeds 5-2 in their own backyard. Following these two wins, we find ourselves just two points behind United. Admittedly, they do have a game in hand, but it's the closest we've been to them all season. Is momentum with us? Will United falter? And it was Saviola once more keeping our FA Cup dreams alive as he scored in the 88th minute against Derby. We came from behind as well in a close game, but it's moments like this that make you think it could be our year. Saviola on the score sheet again with a lovely take and finish as we ventured to Fiorentina for the Champions League, looking for revenge from the defeat in the Super Cup. And we got it with a 2-1 win away from home, giving us a great chance to progress. Against Newcastle, we rescued a point late on and of course it was man of the moment, Javier Saviola. We then completely f***ed our Champions League prospects as we lost 2-0 at home. We're out. And against Wimbledon, we scored two in the space of a minute inside the first eight minutes to race into a two-goal lead. We looked sure to take out a Champions League angle on someone. However, a demolition never arrived, and it was the next goal actually scored by John Hartson just after half-time. Wimbledon then went down to ten men, but actually found themselves with a penalty, which Hartson duly dispatched. It felt like an absolute shit show of a week, to be honest. The only thing worse could have been a win from Wimbledon. Thankfully, John Carew saved us from the depth of despair in the 90th minute as we snuck it 3-2. Unconvincing and hardly inspiring confidence, but we won. The confidence started to come back though as Carew bagged a hat-trick in a 4-2 win against Spurs, and this leaves us in third, one point behind Chelsea, and level on points with United, who have a game in hand. It's a three-horse race. United have been pulled back in by ourselves and Chelsea, and it's literally anyone's. But let's put the Premier League to one side for a minute, as it's time for Aston Villa in the FA Cup. He beat us in the Coca-Cola Cup and it's time to exact some revenge and revenge looked on the cards as Javier Saviola scored not once but twice in the opening 20 minutes, putting us in a comfortable position at half time. However, when Francesco Sinetti pulled one back for Villa in the second half, we had deja vu flashbacks of the Wimbledon game. And rightly so as Sinetti scored his second, levelling things up. Cue the 90th minute heroics. Oh no. Oh no. Sinetti got his hat trick and it's Aston Villa who progressed in the semi-final. We're at the FA Cup. The only thing that could remotely save our season is winning the league, so we needed to go on a good run, which appears no one told players as Southampton scored after 46 seconds in the following game. An equaliser in the second half and Raquel may calm some nerves, and cometh the hour, cometh the man once again, John Coru in the 80th minute, securing the win 2-1. We started to look in some decent form as we beat Everton 5-1, Sunderland 2-0, and then we scraped past Charlton 2-1 with a late goal from, you guessed it, Javier Saviola. It's touch and go in the league, but we have points on the board though, as we're three points clear of United. They do have a game in hand, and our goal difference is identical. So it's shaping up to be a very cagey final few games. Chelsea also have a game in hand, but they're a point further back. Aston Villa are slightly adrift, and Arsenal feel like they've been fully cast out to sea. Not sure what's happened to them, but it hasn't been good. And at home to Liverpool, who are mid-table by the way, we dropped points in a 1-1 draw. Chelsea lost, so it's now five points clear of them with a game in hand, but United didn't play, so now they have two games in hand and only trail us by four points. Oh. Against Derby, we did what we had to, although not without half-time bollocking. It took 71 seconds of the second half for John Carew to put us ahead. Andrei Shevchenko made it two, before Carew rounded things off with a trademark header, making it three. But that wasn't the whole story, oh no no, United had Liverpool, and Liverpool did us a favour by beating United, meaning United have two games in hand, but trail by seven points, the title is back in our hands. 
And not only that, one of their games in hand is midweek against Chelsea. United battered them 4-0. We have Chelsea on the final day ourselves, so this game against Sheffield Wednesday is all the more important. If United fail to beat Norwich and we win, we're champions. And we set off to do our bit in style. Hofflund got us going after 10 minutes. Ronaldinho then put it on a plate for Harry Kuehl two minutes later. By 20 minutes it was three. Ronaldinho again turning provider this time for Shevchenko. Saviola whipped in a corner that Shevchenko nodded home for four. Then Saviola got himself on the score sheet making it five by half time. Ronaldinho got his goal 90 seconds into the second half. And it was Saviola who bagged another two completing his hat-trick in a magnificent 8-0 win. And Norwich did it! They beat United 2-1 at Old Trafford, meaning that Blackburn Rovers are once again Premier League champions. For the third time in five years at the club. We rounded off the season with a 2-2 against Chelsea, Saviola with another brace, leaving him as our top scorer for the season. A third Premier League title, but an underwhelming final season. A poor showing in our pursuit to retain the Champions League, but at least we did win it once. Not like the elusive FA Cup. And that's it, the end. Overall, decent success at Blackburn Rovers. We left them with a plethora of world-class talents that will probably take them onto dizzy heights for many years to come. Until the next story, I bid you adieu.